Hi everyone, John from Chippernaut here to talk about the new version 3 shift light. I'm going to walk through some of the features, to, um, talk about some of the improvements from version 2, and just show you guys some uh, tips and tricks on how things work. Um, sort of a impromptu video, I'm not really scripting this or anything, just kind of winging it. So let's, yeah, let's begin. What you're looking at is the new version 3 shift light from Chippernut. There are quite a few improvements from version 2. One of the first things you'll notice is the new OLED display. It's going to give you a little bit more information. It's also a little clearer to read because it doesn't have to scale numbers uh, like over 10,000 RPM. Uh, all The pickup circuitry has been improved using an opto isolator. Um, we also have a new uh, LED graph here. Um, this is an improvement from the previous generation of LEDs. Uh, those were the WS2812B LEDs and these are the APA102C LEDs. Um, Adafruit uh, markets these LEDs as dot star LEDs. Uh, the, the key advantage to going with these LEDs versus the older ones is that it frees up a lot of the um, critical timing uh, on the Arduino so you get a much more accurate RPM display. So I've currently got the shift light attached to an RPM simulator. The, the code and schematics are available on chippernut.com. It allows you to bench test the shift light so you can uh, ensure that you've assembled everything correctly. Um, just requires one, uh, an additional Arduino to run it. As I was developing this new version 3, uh, very quickly the software expanded beyond the memory capabilities of the Arduino. So I had to strip the code down. Um, and, and basically rewrite major portions of it from scratch. And it was a fantastic opportunity to really clean things up in the code. I removed a lot of unused variables and like reworked the math in some ways to just make it more efficient. And I actually ended up well below the memory limits of the Arduino. Okay, so let's step through the different menu options here and take a look at some of the new features. Um, so first what I'm gonna do, and I apologize if my hand is in the way here, but so to access the menu system, what you're gonna do is push down on the rotary encoder. You will be able to access the menu system um, whether or not it's actually connected to a car. All you need to do is provide 12 volts power and you should be able to access the full menu system. And that's another handy way of making sure that everything's hooked up correctly because in the menu system, it sort of does a test of all the primary functions. You'll see the display, do a little animation there indicating that you've entered the menu and you can also scroll through the menu items. So, uh, first what I'll do is I'll just run through the menu. Uh, the very first screen you see is the menu screen. And when you uh, push the button on this screen, it saves all your settings and takes you back to normal running mode. Um, what's important to note is that anytime you make a change in the shift light, those variables and those, those settings are stored permanently in what's called the EEPROM. So that means you can disconnect the power uh, and hook it back up and all of your settings will be retained. As we rotate through this, the second option is brightness. Right now I have this set on the dimmest setting and I'll give you an idea of how bright this shift light can get when I crank this brightness setting up. It gets pretty bright. Push again to save that setting. The next option is dimmer. Now, uh, this menu item has two steps to it. The first one allows you to set the dim, dimming brightness. Now, typically you're gonna want this dimmer than your uh, normal brightness. That way, when you turn on your lights at night, this display gets a little bit dimmer. Um, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna leave this at a higher dimmer setting so I can show you the next step. And the next step is when you push the button again, it goes to dimmer logic. Now this is based on how you've got this dimmer wire, the yellow wire here, connected to your vehicle. Some vehicles um, have a power switched or a voltage switched lighting system, others switch ground instead. And that's what this dimmer logic is really implying is what, how is this connected? And allows, it also gives you some options, some freedom for, um, for different installations. So I'll give you an idea of how this works. Let's set this to low and I'll exit. So it's running at its current brightness level and if I attach this dimmer wire to ground now, it'll get brighter. And you'll see the little symbol pop up. Disconnect it and it goes off. So this would be analogous to you know turning your lights on and off. 
The next menu option is the activation RPM. Now this is the uh, point at which the bar graph starts displaying the RPM. And you can set this in increments of 10, push to save. The next menu option is the shift RPM. Now this is the point at which the display starts flashing. So I've currently got this set for 6,000 RPM. And again, adjustable in increments of 10. The next menu option is smoothing. What this does is allows you to software filter the incoming RPM signal. And this should really only be used if your display is getting a little jumpy or there might be some noise in your RPM signal coming from the vehicle. Um, basically, it just takes an average reading of, uh, of five RPM values, averages that out and, gives, and then updates the display with that number. The next menu option is the pulses per rotation. And this is where you're gonna configure the shift light for your particular application, for your vehicle, for your engine size. This allows you to select how many pulses of the RPM signal are occurring every rotation of the engine. Now, typically a four cylinder engine is gonna have two pulses ro per rotation. A six cylinder will have three, and an eight cylinder will have four. There are some instances where you might need to tailor this number, so um, to come in here, It'll give you, uh, you push the rotary encoder and it will display the current pulses per rotation as well as the RPM value directly beneath it. So that way, you, when you adjust this, you can kind of fine tune it. And you'll see as I increase this number how it will scale that RPM. Let's go back down to three. And then push to save. The next menu option is the number of LEDs. And this is just a setting where it allows you to update how many LEDs you have. The shift light will support up to 32 LEDs. The next menu option is color segments. And this allows you to separate out where the different color bands are arranged on this uh, LED bar graph. And I'll show you how this works. When you push down on this, the first thing it's gonna do is uh, light up the entire display but you're only adjusting this first segment. So as you rotate this, you'll see the width of that segment change. And when you push this again, it allows you to then adjust the second segment. And this final segment is adjusted basically by process of elimination. You adjust the first one, you adjust the second one, and the third one just sort of fills in um, where it's needed. All right, the next menu option is animation mode. There are four animations. There's left to right, center to out, right to left, and out to center. So let's choose out to center. So it says you must redo the segments. So now it'll allow you to rebuild your color segmentation. So let's go ahead and do that. And that looks good. The next menu option allows you to set the different colors of the shift light. So when you enter that, it will display the entire graph. So it allows you to kind of see the colors in context with the, the rest of the display. Set color one, rotate it again. Next menu option is for color two. So again, it's gonna display the entire graph and then allow you to change just the second color. Wrong way. Let's make that yellow. And then color three. You can turn it off if you want it even. We'll just leave it on red. And then um, the next menu option allows you to set the shift color. Now this is one of the changes from version two. In version two, you were um, in version two, you could set two different shift colors. I found that most people just wanted uh, one shift color and then um, the second shift color is black or it's just, it turns off. So when you enter this menu option, you basically can just select what color you want it to flash at.
The next menu option is debug mode. And basically what this does is it outputs the RPM value via USB. And the final menu option is system reset. And basically this just resets the shift light back to its default settings. Um, just in case if you want to just start from over from scratch. So we're going to exit the menu now. We've gone through everything. Push to save. And you should see our new colors now. All right, now one of the other uh, cool things that I want to talk about is, let's zoom out a little here. All right, so one of the other things I kind of wanted to talk about was um, new options coming soon in the type of LED strip that you can get. So right now what we're looking at is the standard LED strip. Uh, there's, there's no waterproofing, there's no silicone, it's just basically a flexible circuit board with VHB uh, 3M tape on the back. And so you can kind of flex this and custom mold it for your application. I also have soon, let's see if you can see this. This is a waterproof version of the same light strip. And it's kind of hard to tell, but there's, there's silicone encasing it. So it makes it a little bit more, I, th I find this a little bit more um, like durable, I guess but we can hot swap these real quick and I'll show you what this one looks like. Looks pretty much the same. It's a little prismatic, a little bit more color infill. It's a little hard to tell on the camera. Um, but again, this still has the VHB tape on the back. Um, still really useful and still very flexible. This just has the, you know, the added benefit of a little bit of, I would call it moisture resistance because it's not waterproof, it's moisture resistant. <laughs> and the final strip, and this one is really cool. There's a new version of the APA 102 LED out and this is something that I wanna carry on shipper out very soon. What you're looking at right now is a prototype of a 2020, um, it's less than half the size basically of these 50-50 LEDs. And this stuff is so cool. It's so flexible. It's almost like yarn. You can just twist it and mold it. Still has uh, the VHB 3M tape on the back, but it's just a lot smaller and it's such neat stuff. It's so cool. So look for this soon. This is going to be on chippernut.com. Um, yeah, it's pretty neat stuff. Once again, I just want to thank everyone. Uh, all of my customers, all of the people that post online and share videos. Honestly, this would not have been possible. I mean, this thing's crazy. It wouldn't have been possible without your help, without your support, without without people you know contributing and, and posting videos at online and making little code tweaks here and there and, and coming up with ideas and improvements um, and in testing and, and you know installing it in many different vehicles. Honestly, this would not have been possible. So thanks again for watching, stay tuned. I'm gonna to try to post more videos soon. I'm working on a promotional video for Chip or Not, a little bit more general. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a higher production value than, than these videos have been, but uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. And um, thanks for watching.